this is our lecture one on process plan design and economics so today we are going to discuss on design of chemical processes so this is the outline for today's class so today we will be discussing on what is a plant design what are the general design considerations and how to develop a process design and how to optimize it what are the various strategies used practical considerations in design the design approach sustainability in design and also some feasibility studies so for today's learning outcome we will focus on three main issues first we will introduce to plant design where we will learn what is the role of a chemical engineer what is the anatomy of a chemical plant and then design of the chemical plant which includes the various design phases and how to uh, make a particular selection for your design and what are the approaches that you can use and then finally we will study some of the general design considerations including the sustainability factor and then we will look into how to develop the design based on the feasibility studies so the key takeaway from today's lecture would be role as a chemical engineer and then general process design development well to start with before you design a plan as a chemical engineer you need to have a lot of knowledge and understanding of the fundamental sciences that you learn from your semester one until the uh, design module right so there are various engineering principles that you need to be aware of which includes mass and energy balance which is very very important so that you know how much mass goes in and how much mass comes out from your entire process whether it is a raw material or it's an additional supplementary materials it could be a catalyst or it could be utilities etc and also the energy balances how much heat is required for the reaction to take place so how much energy is input for a separation process and so on so you need to make sure your input and output sheet is balanced next you should know the thermodynamics and the reaction kinetics this forms the chemistry that happens inside your reactor you should know the equilibrium uh, of the reactions you should know the rate of the reactions how many reactions are taking place what are the desired and undesired product that are being formed what are your reaction conditions and so on next moving on you should also have a sound knowledge on heat and mass transfer operations and computer technology computer technology is very important because we use a lot of computer simulations to design or optimize a chemical process so as a chemical engineer you must have the ability to apply all the knowledge that you have acquired to initiate the design to develop a new design or to expand the existing plan or to make a revision into your plan so that your plan becomes more sustainable more profitable and to improve the design so maybe you can use some new technologies that are being researched every day right so you can see how you can uh, change the technology or make a transformation for betterment of society so what is the process design so a process is a unit operation or it is a group of operations which allow something to be accomplished right for example you have a unit operation which is a separation process for example distillation column so what the distillation column does okay so certain goal or objective is accomplished in your unit operation so here distillation for example will help you to separate your components based on the boiling points or you take an example of a reaction process so here we again had different kinds of a reactor it could be exothermic it could be endothermic reactions it could be adiabatic it could be isothermal reactors it could be packed bed reactors or fluidized bed reactor and so on so each type of a reactor will do a specific task and give you a specific conversion of your reactants 
So what is a process design? So a chemical process design is the selection and sequencing of the units. So you need to ensure you select the proper equipment and you align them in a sequential order such that your raw materials are transformed into useful products. Okay, so there could be a physical changes, chemical or biochemical transformations can happen in your reaction stage. So during the process design stage, you also do a material specification. What type of material do you choose for your process? What is the material of construction for your reactors? What are the raw materials? So once you know you have to select what type of reactor, you need to identify the operating conditions like temperature and pressure, right? So what are the utilities and auxiliaries, auxiliaries that you use in your plant? Whether it is a saturated steam, you want to use a superheated steam and so on, right? So PNID, this is a very important aspect. So here you will draw your piping and instrument instrumentation diagram which will represent the entire flow sheet. It's a flow synthesis including all the process control that you want to use or control your process. So a process design basically you can do it in three approaches. One is a totally new design you start from scratch or you take an existing design and you modify the design, you tweak a bit. Maybe you only change the type of separation process used in the existing one. You modify it with a more advanced technique. Maybe you change a reactor, reactor type, or maybe you change a catalyst, or maybe you combine reaction and separation together, for example, in a reactive distillation, so on. So that is what we call a tweaking into the existing process or modifying the design. Or the third one is coming up with a more optimized design. So here you need to do a uh, lot of studies on permutations and combinations at each stage of your process, right from the um, raw material processing to the reaction and the separation process. So you need to see what are the various possibilities available at each stage and then you optimize from there to get a more sustainable process. <clears throat> so how do you define process synthesis? So process synthesis is the step in design where the chemical engineer select the unit operations, their component parts, the interconnections, operating conditions, such that you create an optimized flow process sheet or the flow diagram that meets the given objective and the constraint. So this is the definition of process synthesis. So whatever we just discussed in the previous class, here you are going to put everything together and then you are developing a process flow sheet. So now the objectives are constrained, whatever we talk here, these are linked to your three elements of sustainability, which are environmental, safety and economics. All right. Next is using mathematical programming techniques like nonlinear programming or mixed integer nonlinear programming. Generally, we use to optimize our flow sheet. So when you do a system optimization, it will give you more sustainable process. So when we talk about a sustainable process, what do you understand by a sustainable process okay so basically nowadays if you can uh, find some research papers they have proposing lot of processes especially in uh, biofuels in energy sectors bioproducts or value-added products from waste to useful product and so on try to come up with a more sustainable process so developing a sustainable chemical uh, facilities to generate a useful product this has attracted a lot of attention from various research aspects. So this generally involves changing the traditional conception of transformation processes into more sustainable production based on the green chemistry principles or renewable energy and triple dimensions of 
sustainable development so the triple dimensions or the three pillars are your economy environment and society all right so now the chemical process sustainability this is basically a conceptualized as those environmentally friendly actions so that we enhance more of green processes that include a relevant aspect of chemical processes such as improving the efficiency of the existing process conserve the energy or maybe boost the economy of your nation okay now next coming to the sustainable approach so what do you understand here by a sustainable approach so this process design framework has three main stages the first one is your process synthesis the second one is your process analysis and then you have process optimization once you are done with all these three you will attain a sustainable design approach okay so the various researchers they define the sustainability into uh maybe in different contexts so for example sustainable design approach is uh you maybe you can look into the raw materials cost reduction maybe environmental performance how you can improve the uh, environmental performance and then how you can reduce the energy consumption in your plant all right or how you can do integrating the sustainability principles in chemical process design by using some computer simulations okay so sustainability approach now also include some computer simulations so now what is the benefit of using sustainability approach there are several benefits that we can count on first one is to increase the profit then second we can conserve resources the third one maybe we can reduce pollution or safety improvement and maybe also you can design a green product all right next process synthesis you can now further divide it into two main categories one is process planning another is process design so under the planning stage you generally do the planning based on your objective that you have set okay so to attain the objective you will evaluate various criteria design criteria okay and then you will select lot of technologies that you can use what are the possibilities of using so you need to come up with the proper plan once you have a plan ready then you can divide it into interconnected task so you have different task which will be given to a different uh, pic based on the expertise and then later you can merge them into together maybe one is expert with designing the equipment one is expert with the environmental aspect right one is expert with the design and simulation so you divide the task and then you interconnect the task later on okay and then you develop the task based on the objective that is set in the beginning so at the end ensure you meet your design objective okay now coming to the process synthesis by the hierarchical approach so what do you see here this is entirely a approach right from the beginning selection of a basis until you develop a flow sheet right or maybe you look for some alternatives or process integration later on so what is the goal of this so the goal is making the methodology more efficient so how do you make it more efficient by reducing the interactions between synthesis and integration level okay so synthesis is here 
integration is here so we have to reduce the interactions between the two so when you develop a flow sheet generally we keep in mind our reaction and separation separation stage we start with a reaction then we go for the different uh, separation processes or recycle streams to develop our flow sheet but we also have other stages that we have to look into right so here we have different levels so the first level maybe we can call this as level zero level zero so level zero is basis of design so what we do in this step <coughs> so this step consists of gathering necessary inform information to develop the conceptual process including uh, maybe technology you gather some information on the health safety and environmental risk that can cause be, uh, from your raw materials or your finished products or byproduct selection of the site to build your plant that is a plant location availability of the raw materials what are the prices of your raw materials for how much you can sell your product and all those so this will be your design okay we also call it as a feasibility study which we will look into detail later then we have level one so level one includes chemistry and thermodynamics so you need to know the various process part that you identify to produce your product they have certain chemical reactions so write down all the chemical reactions for whatever alternatives you find you can just tabulate them all the chemical reactions compile them analyze them okay and then you need to know the detailed description of the chemistry involved uh, maybe for designing your reaction system so once you know what are the what type of reactions are taking place you can design your reactor at a later stage more efficiently if you don't know your type of reactions how many reactions with this exothermic endothermic then you cannot design your reactor system here so you should know the chemistry of all the reactions taking place inside your chemical reactor so that is the basic understanding of the chemistry this is also required because you are also going to handle the safety and environmental issues okay if the based on the reactions you will know what are the harmful products are formed what are the harmful gases that can be released from your reactor right so this one will give you more information on that next coming to the level 2 this is your input output analysis okay so here you also do studies on environment and energy okay because why environment because you know what are the output streams what are the uh, harmful gases streams or what are the waste liquid coming out from your process so you identify how does it impact your environment also you will know your energy requirement in your process okay so here you are going to perform the overall mass and energy balance you also need to perform economic potential analysis all right and then the next step is reactor and separation and recycle so reaction separation and recycle this basically is your entire uh, heart of the process so this will generally deals with the overall process architecture like chemical reactor how does it interact with the various separators through recycle etc so your reaction stage is also very important because based on your design of your reactor you will know how many byproducts are formed and that will further decide how many separation equipments are required to purify or separate those products from the byproducts or impurities okay so after that level four will be your separation system so separation system is basically the sequence of operation that you perform to separate your gases liquids solids etc from your various unit operations right and then finally we have level 5 which is energy integration here generally we do pinch analysis 
right in level 5 we do heat exchanger network or pinch analysis for energy integration so why the energy integration is required there are many benefits of doing this you will identify what is the optimal heat and optimal heat and power usage what is you can design energy saving separation process maybe maybe then uh, you can see how to uh, also minimize the uh, water in your plant and maybe you also want to minimize the solvent usage in your plant by recycling or you can also perform the entire site integration that you require less space in your plant finally we we'll go to level six level six is health safety and environment so the environment aspect we already learned here in our level two so we already know what are the various reactants and products and what is its impact on environment right so here it's easy for you to come up with the policies and regulations that you need to follow in order to meet the hse requirement next is level seven which is your control system which is very very important where you develop your pnid diagram you know how to control your maybe flow rates maybe the level or temperature pressure and so on so this one process control system is very essential so that your process is stable right stability in operation is very important okay you also need to control how to how much to set up your makeup feed stream for example right so this is also a key role in the process synthesis then after you know all this your final flow sheet will be ready okay so you can see you have done a lot of optimization brainstorming to develop your chemical process flow sheet so here you can also look for alternative pathways that you can do okay so similarly you can keep on generating different uh, process flow sheet using different alternatives and you can also perform the process integration maybe you take one process from one source another process from another source and see how you can integrate it to make it more sustainable process all right so now we have to move to feasibility study so before we go to the feasibility study we will take a short break here and then we'll come back for the lecture all right thank you very much <music>